Welcome to American Medicine Today, presented by the Bonatti Spine Institute, featuring the internationally acclaimed inventor of the Bonatti Spine Procedures, Alfred Bonatti, MD. Now here along with Dr. Bonatti, your host, Kimberly Brumell. Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us for American Medicine Today. I'm Kimberly Brumell, joined by world-renowned orthopedic surgeon, Dr. Alfred Bonatti of the Bonatti Spine Institute. Thank you for being here. Doc? (laughs) <laughs> Hi. He's engrossed in his notes. He is. Yes. And the voice from over there, well, that's our executive radio producer, Ethan Euchre. How you so doing? Thank you for being here. Pleasure to be here as always. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hi again. <laughs> Hi, Doc. <laughs> well, for those of you that listen to our program and watch via um, WeBeamTV.com, um, you guys know that Dr. Benatti started out in invasive open back spine surgery Mm -hmm. and he learned along the way that those techniques and procedures didn't really work and that really got to him because when he tried to help fix somebody he really wanted them relieved of their pain so over time he developed his own patented methods and tools um, and they are called the Bonatti spine procedures and he has brought help to many thousands of people suffering from neck back sciatic pain, um, if they have whiplash, uh, fibromyalgia, RSD, um, migraines, these are all things that can be relieved by the Bonatti spine procedures. And it's not just us saying so, week after week we have patients that talk about their experience and we have over 94% success and that's patient reported success and when we look back in our files over a seven and a half year time frame the actual percentage rate was 98.75 percent immediate patient satisfaction that's, that's incredible amazing. yeah yeah and it's not only just you know it, it, ama- it continues to amaze me the spectrum of patients that we talk to yes. you know all age ranges in mm-hmm. fact um i think the patient we're going to speak with today is uh she's just 22. a young lady 22 yes. years old you know mm-hmm. so it's not just you know, the elderly or anything like that, Correct. it's it's people of all ages that yes. can benefit from uh, the Bonatti Spine Procedures. And even those that have heard from other doctors that, that's it, sorry, you're just going to have to live with the pain, uh-uh, not the case the majority of the time, seek out the Bonatti Spine Institute. And you can do so at Bonatti.com. Uh, later in our Back to Life segment, we're actually going to speak to that patient. Her name's Marie Boltersdorf, and she had surgery basically on her tailbone. L5-S1 area. Mm -hmm. Um, She's going to be calling in from Virginia. Then we get a chance to speak to critically acclaimed filmmaker and New York Times bestselling author of America, Imagine a World Without Her, Dinesh D'Souza. Very excited about that one. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, we'll hear what's new in American medicine today. But in studio, (laughs) we have... Dr. Dreshen, and he is a world-renowned plastic surgeon at the Clinique of Plastic Surgery here in St. Petersburg. And you're going to be discussing with us your specific uh, refresher lift procedure and cool sculpting. So again, thank you for being here, Dr. Dreshen. Good morning, Kimberly. Kimberly, I know um, we actually um, did a segment with Dr. Dreshen yes. for our television show, which is going to mm-hmm. air um, a week from tonight, I believe. Yes. Um, and I know I was telling you uh, when we went to his office to mm-hmm. film that segment that um, I wasn't honestly very interested in hearing about the facelift thing because I just saw because I'm you know I'm 34 right. years old I'm a guy mm-hmm. it doesn't I just it wasn't really that interesting to me but but what did i tell you 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 said just wait till you see some of these photos yes and we saw the before and afters and Mm -hmm. it boggled my mind how how different some of these people looked so uh dr dreschen why don't you kind of explain to the the listeners how you came up with your facelift uh your refresher lift Uh, procedure yeah the refresher lift procedure is a is a procedure been developing over the last 15 years i think right now it really down pat so I get very predictable result. Mm-hmm. I think it's also a certain philosophy of, of rejuvenation. You know, rejuvenation is not nip and tuck, it's not making people tight looking or odd looking like you can see a number of a Hollywood fixture. Mm-hmm. But it's trying to get people looking more dynamic, more pleasant, more fresh. And I think when you, you look at the surgery in, in with that goal in mind you're going to automatically do a number of steps that are not the usual face lift procedure. So what I've developed is some kind of what we call a vertical lift, is doing what you do in surgery, the same thing as you do with your hand when you try to show a a fresher face, Mm -hmm. and also really look at the expression of the person. And since somebody sometimes look angry, they look tired, they look Mm -hmm. sad, and I think it's really important to, to, to focus 
on improving that expression. And I think if you look at the before and after, I run a study with medical students showing pretty clearly that the people afterward were much more desirable in society. And then if you look at what's happening all over the country, from a radio station to a TV station, there's nobody with a sad or angry face on the screen. Yes. Everybody looks nice and fresh and dynamic, and that regardless of the age. So for me, the rejuvenation is more about restoring a fresh, pleasant expression, a dynamic expression, which is important for everyone, including uh, the business community. Very well, true. Well, and I, and I know we got into um, how, mm -hmm. uh, especially nowadays, especially for females, mm -hmm. Kimberly, yes. um, as you age, you know, you tend to, it's just kind of the way society is nowadays, where, you know, mm -hmm. there's such pressure to continue to, continue to try to look young, yes. um, to be viable. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, do you do, you do more females, I'm assuming, Dr. Dreschen, well, or? Yeah, it's still the trend, especially in Florida, is it, still 80% uh, female. Mm -hmm. But I, I still think the, the men uh, mostly don't participate as much into it, mostly by, by ignorance. They don't really see what can be done for them. But in a competitive society like we are, and uh, where jobs are a little scarcer that we want to find, and uh, uh, in politics, etc., I think it's very important to have an engaging, uh, engaging expression and a dynamic look. And that's proven all through uh, the, the business world. That's true. I mean, we see it right now. The economy is in the toilet. Let's face it, it is. Mm -hmm. And with people having to work longer, they're not able to retire at 65 anymore. So if they're in that workforce, they need to look young and energetic so it's not on companies' mm -hmm. minds. Hey, look at this older employee. They're starting to slow down. Nope. And uh, yeah, it's absolutely true. I mean, you can see uh, definitely just look at the uh, the anchor people yes. in, uh, on TV. I mean, there's none of these people. The old Morley Schaefer and everybody else have virtually disappeared mm -hmm. because they don't look fresh enough. And uh, mm -hmm. we want to see the dynamic, clean-looking features, and that's the way society is. But it's also that, a self-confidence booster. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Dr. Benetti. There are two elements that they are going to be very important in the 21st century, mm -hmm. uh, and this is... Uh, locomotion and uh, how you look. Mm -hmm. uh, it's true that we're aging and the population is aging, but really the experience and the quality of the individuals mm -hmm. that they are in the 50s and 60s and 70s are ir irreplaceable. And uh, the, the business community and uh, the arts community, whoever uh, work with that specific individual is losing that type of an individual because doesn't look as good as supposed to. And then they replace that person with somebody on the 20s and 30s, and then they really don't have the knowledge mm -hmm. that the other person accumulates through life. And at the same time, the same thing goes with locomotion person needs to be able to move, needs to stand straight, needs to walk, needs to do things. So the technology today is amazing how it can restore the outside of the human to really a very much good looking youth and uh, at the same time maintain the quality of the brain and the, the knowledge. Well, I totally agree with that. I think it has become a very important aspect in the, in the later years to, to be as active and participate in society as much as we can. Mm -hmm. uh, the reverse is, is, is true senility. I mean, you want people to be able to still be useful to society as late as they can in life. Well, uh, with just a few minutes left, uh, I know we wanted to touch upon uh, your cool sculpting yes. as well, which is also fascinating. You basically have a machine that sort of sucks the fat mm -hmm. up into mm -hmm. it and freezes it. Can you explain a little bit how uh, cool sculpting works? All right, cool sculpting is basically a non-invasive way to get rid of lumps and rolls, mm -hmm. you know. So there's no other technique uh, beside uh, liposuction. It's more of a surgical approach. So the cool sculpting is based on, uh, on a unusual uh, idea is that if you freeze the skin and you cool the skin 
badly enough, you're going to actually freeze the underlying fat. Hmm. And the fat is more sensitive than the skin. So basically, the, the fat will be damaged and, and uh, the fat cell will die while your skin is virtually untouched. So uh, by applying the, the very cool applicator on the skin, you can actually reduce the fat underneath. And it, it only takes about an hour, correct? It's an hour per, per area. It's per an hour area. per area. But I mean, there's no, there's no downtime. It's all sore afterward. But mm -hmm. there's no downtime. You can go back to work right away. So for the professional, I think it's an excellent idea. How long to does my, it take the system to, to flush out? About a month or so, you see, the, you see the result. Yeah, And the result are permanent. Basically, it's destruction of fat cell. That's fantastic. Yeah, because the cells on the body and the fat cells on the body you were born with certain amount of mm -hmm. cells. Mm -hmm. And if you destroy those ones, those things that don't come back again. The important thing that I was trying to ask you is uh, once you do this, this freezing situation, mm -hmm. do you have any, any and, and needs to be eliminated in a certain way? You are going, to, that thing is eliminated as a as a, as, a, as a fluid to the kidneys and Correct. as a waste. Mm -hmm. Is any any compromise to the kidneys, any problem? No, being no, it's a, very, it's a very slow process. Basically, the fat the fat cell explodes almost like releasing oil, and the oil is, is pretty much um, slowly reabsorbed by the body. I mean, it's no, there's no, no evidence of any damage to kidney and so on. None of this is immediate, it's a very slow process. Okay. It's not going to elevate your cholesterol no. or anything like that. <laughs> no, no. All right. It's okay. fascinating stuff. So it is. if people want uh, to look into the refresher lift or cool sculpting, uh, you do both of them at your office in St. Petersburg, correct? Correct, yeah. And how would they get in touch? Well, you can check uh, my website. It's called uh, clinic of, uh, clinicps.com, clinic like clinic cosmetic, or my phone number is 727-592-0991. Excellent. That's great. So if you yourself want to tighten up those problem areas or give yourself a little more confidence, reach out to Dr. Christian Dreshen in St. Petersburg, the Clinic of Plastic Surgery. You're listening to American Medicine Today on News Radio 970 WFLA. After the break, we're going to hear from patient Marie Boltersdorf. Revolution. Revolutionary in his field, Dr. Benatti created, perfected, and patented the Benatti Spine Procedures. Using his genius, Benatti invented precise tools necessary to minimize surgery, scarring, anesthesia, and recovery. So successful are the Benatti Spine Procedures, they consistently reflect over 94% patient satisfaction. 45,000 successful procedures have been performed exclusively at our location. Nearly half our patients suffer from failed back and neck surgeries at other facilities. Benatti succeeds where others fail. This is the first time that I am pain free after 18 years. And it's just wonderful. I love it. Phenomenal results. No pain whatsoever. My pain is virtually gone. Nothing short of a miracle. Those surgeries gave me my life back. Already I feel like a new person. I'm going home new. I can chase my grandbaby now. I can garden, I can cook, and I'm really thrilled. The outcome has been remarkable. I feel 100% better. It's like a miracle. It was phenomenal. It literally did change my life. I was in a wheelchair at that time and uh, I left here walking. Every single pain that I had when I came here is gone. I'm ready to go home and feel great. This place is great. Thank you. Everything that they said they would do, they have done and I'm very, very satisfied and happy with those results. I knew in surgery, in fact, I told the surgeon when he relieved the pain off the nerve. The pain is gone. I'm feeling wonderful. I have no pain. I feel better than I felt in four years from the surgery. It was almost immediate relief. Today I am totally pain free, which is just amazing. It's fantastic. It definitely works. I mean, I really don't know what else to tell you. <laughs> I'm happy. <laughs> Revolutionary in his field, Dr. Benatti created, perfected, and patented the Benatti Spine Procedures. Using his genius, Benatti invented precise tools necessary to minimize surgery, scarring, anesthesia, and recovery. 
So successful are the Bonatti Spine procedures, they consistently reflect over 94% patient satisfaction. 45,000 successful procedures have been performed exclusively at our location. Nearly half our patients suffer from failed back and neck surgeries at other facilities. Bonatti succeeds where others fail. You're listening to American Medicine Today, presented by the Bonatti Spine Institute, featuring the internationally acclaimed inventor of the Bonatti Spine Procedures, Alfred Bonatti, MD. Once again, here are Dr. Bonatti and your host, Kimberly Brumell. Thanks for listening to American Medicine Today. I'm Kimberly Brumell, joined by world-renowned orthopedic surgeon, Dr. Alfred Bonatti, Ethan Euchre, and our senior fellow, Jeff Wagstaff. Now, on the line, we have patient Marie Boltersdorf, and she's on the line from Virginia, young lady, age 22. Thank you for being here. Thank you. I'm, I hope everybody's having a nice day today. Yes. And you have quite an interesting story, so why don't you start from the beginning? Um, I believe you had spoken with me and said you were in a car accident, so why don't you kind of elaborate on that and how you made your way to the Bonatti Spine Institute? Um, well, the way I actually heard about uh, Bonatti Spine Institute was because my father was actually uh, a patient there. Mm -hmm. But when I was in middle school about eight years ago, mm -hmm. um, we I was in the car with my mom. My seat was back, and we had gotten rear-ended. Um, right away, I didn't feel any pain at all. It was, I mean, a week later, I was still fine. And I went to a friend's house, and I was just sitting on a rock for about a half hour with mm -hmm. her and slept over. And the next morning, I was just curled over in pain. Oh. And I was out of school for two weeks, just unable to even walk. And how old were you at the time, Marie? Did you say middle school? Um, I know it was about eight years ago. My math is a little rusty. <laughs> <laughs> That's because you missed all that school. That's the <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Uh, College teaches you so much. <laughs> I guess so. So, um, so, so you got in a car accident. You had a, a problem with your with your tailbone, correct? Was that where the issue mm -hmm. was? Where the pain was? Yeah, it was actually directly at my tailbone. Oh wow. Okay. So, was it debilitating? You said you were out of school for for a while. Uh, how else did it yeah. affect your life? I mean it it took it took a really long time um, to be well enough to go back to school. Um, I was out of school for, at least from what I remember, I believe it was two weeks, maybe a little bit more. And when I got back to school, it was very, very embarrassing because I, I mean, in middle school, when kids are at their cruelest time, mm -hmm. I was walking around with a rolling backpack and a donut to sit on. Oh, no. Right? <laughs> and it was extremely humiliating the entire year. I had a lot of pain, and I went to many different doctors. And they looked at me for cysts on my tailbone mm -hmm. and didn't find anything. When they didn't find a cyst, they said, well, looks like you're going to have to live with it. Get over it. Oh, wow. Wow. And these were leading doctors in your area. Yes, they were. Isn't it amazing, Kimberly, how often we hear that story where we have a patient on, they're in a ton of pain, and basically their doctors and sometimes multiple doctors mm -hmm. say, well, there's nothing we can do. You're going to have to right. live with it. Um, so what made you decide to uh, to, to uh, look up Dr. Bonatti, Marie? Uh, well, I had, I've, I mean, like I said, for eight years, I've, I've felt the pain from it. It, mm -hmm. it went down a little bit to the point where I didn't have to sit on a donor or anything unless I was taking very, very long car drives. Um, but after about eight years, I had gone snowboarding because I'm a sporty person. I love snowboarding and everything and went with a couple friends. And I fell just right on my tailbone, and I was curled over in horrible pain. Mm. And the pain was worse for about, mm, about three or four days and then went back to where I was before. But after that, I just I decided, you know what, enough is enough. Mm -hmm. I've been having this pain. I've been having this issue for so long. Um, I talked to my dad, and I said, well, they that Spinal Institute, Bonatti Institute, helped you. You think maybe they can help me because all the doctors here in Virginia, I mean, you tell them there's something wrong with your tailbone, they go running the other way. Right. <laughs> So your so doctor... It's, it's such a high liability. <laughs> exactly. So uh, so your father had a procedure through Dr. Bonatti mm -hmm. uh, a few years ago. So obviously um, he gave him glowing reviews, I'm assuming. So you knew that Dr. Bonatti yes. was legit. You looked him up. Um, so what did, uh, what did Dr. Bonatti say when you made your way down here to Hudson? 
Um, it was actually, it was a really surprising experience because, I mean, my, my consistent experience with any medical problems I've ever had with any clinic was you come in, they say, okay, you're this number patient, uh, sit down, wait, we'll get your stuff down, we'll get your stuff down, look at you, okay, bye, never speak to you again. Um, it wasn't like that at all when I came into the Institute. Mm-hmm. It was like I was coming into a family reunion. <laughs> um, everybody was so incredibly friendly. And even when I met Ms., uh, Dr. Bernardi, mm-hmm. uh, he came in the room, patted me on the head, and he said, you poor girl. <laughs> you know, he was like, you, you've been going through a lot, how are you feeling and everything. And uh, he was just so incredibly friendly. And it was just absolutely wonderful. Um and when he talked to me, he looked at my uh, my MRI and everything, and he was looking at it, and immediately he knew where where it was on the tailbone and everything, and he said, are you having pain here? And I said, yep, that's exactly where it is. And he was like, well, it's because of this, and no problem. We can work on fix. We can fix that. Mm-hmm. And I was surprised because he had been bad an eye at it being right at the tailbone because every other doctor who I've told him, it's, it's on the tailbone. It's not anywhere else. Mm-hmm. They go, oh, well, um, uh, and get kind of really <laughs> nervous and afraid because they don't want to touch the tailbone. Dr. Bernardi's not intimidated by an old tailbone, are you, mm-hmm. are you Dr. Bernardi? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, Marie, so um, just kind of walk us through the process real quick. We only have a couple of minutes left, but how, how, was, your, uh, how was your procedure? How did it go? Did you uh, experience immediate pain relief while you were still on the table, as seems to happen a lot? And talking with the doctor? Um, mm-hmm. Well, during this pr- the procedure, it was very painful. I, I usually can boast on having a high pain tolerance, uh-huh. but man, I felt it. Um, but after he had finished, and he said, okay, get up and walk around, kind of thought to myself, get up and walk around, you just did the surgery. <laughs> <laughs> but I did anyways, and he said, do you feel anything? I said, nope, I don't feel any pain or anything there anymore. Amazing. And he was like, okay, good. Yeah. And he said, you can, you can sit back down, and I sat back down. Next thing I know, I woke up in the recovery room, mm-hmm. very sleepy, but feeling pretty good. Right. So it was immediate pain relief. That's uh, mm-hmm. that's one of the things that still blows my mind about the the Bonatti spine procedure is that you know some of these people that have been in pain for so long, while they're still on the table, you know, Doctor Bonatti gets in there, works his magic, mm-hmm. and they immediately uh, don't feel that pain anymore. That's incredible. Yeah, and I mean the procedure was less than ten minutes. It was it, amazing. Wow. That's fantastic. And and being interactive with the doctor, I'm sure, helped him exactly pinpoint the root of the problem oh yes definitely and i mean i i absolutely i've already recommended Bonatti institute to multiple friends of mine that have had issues and told them you really want to be treated like a person you really want to be treated well by a doctor and see people who actually care about you for once Mm -hmm. you go there that's fantastic so i'm assuming you're uh you're feeling good nowadays marie oh yeah definitely that's excellent well, uh, continued pain-free living. Uh, you're a very young lady to yes. to be experiencing that kind of pain to begin with. So we're glad that Dr. Bonatti and uh, the Bonatti Spine Institute could uh, help alleviate your pain. Thank you, and I thank Dr. Bonatti too. Thank you, Mary. <laughs> Continue good health, and thank you for taking part in our program. I'm um, sorry. What was that? You broke up a little bit. That's okay. I just said thank you for taking part in the program. All right, thank you. You have a great day. Bye-bye, you, you too. too. Thanks, Marie. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right. Now, if people are in pain like Marie was and is no longer in pain, thanks to the Bonatti Spine uh, Institute, how do people get in touch, Kimberly? Well, if they need more help, they can reach out to the Bonatti Spine Institute at 855-267-0483, or they can visit Bonatti.com. Coming up after the break, well, you're going to hear more from critically acclaimed filmmaker and best... Um, Author of the New York Times but, list. Best selling author. I got that flipped around. But anyway, you're going to hear from Dinesh D'Souza about his movie, America. You're listening to News Radio 970, WFLA. Revolutionary in his field, Dr. Bonatti created, perfected, and patented the Bonatti spine procedures. Using his genius, Bonatti invented precise tools necessary to minimize surgery, scarring, anesthesia, and recovery. So successful are the Bonatti spine procedures, they consistently reflect over 94% patient satisfaction. 45,000 successful procedures have been performed exclusively at our location. Nearly half our patients suffer from failed back and neck surgeries at other facilities. Bonatti succeeds where others fail.
this is the first time that I am pain free after 18 years. And it's just wonderful. I love it. Phenomenal results. No pain whatsoever. My pain is virtually gone. Nothing short of a miracle. Those surgeries gave me my life back. Already I feel like a new person. I'm going home new. I can chase my grandbaby now. I can garden. I can cook. And uh, I'm really thrilled. The outcome has been remarkable. I feel 100% better. It's like a miracle. It was phenomenal. It literally did change my life. I was in a wheelchair at that time and uh, I left here walking. Every single pain that I had when I came here is gone. I'm ready to go home and feel great. This place is great. Thank you. Everything that they said they would do, they have done and I'm very, very satisfied and happy with those results. I knew in surgery, in fact I told the surgeon when he relieved the pain off the nerve. The pain is gone. I'm feeling wonderful. I have no pain. I feel better than I felt in four years from the surgery. It was almost immediate relief. Today I am totally pain free, which is just amazing. It's fantastic. It definitely works. I mean, I really don't know what else to tell you. <laughs> I'm happy. <laughs>
you know, stealing the country from the Native Americans. Mm -hmm. Then they're told about 250 years of slavery. America stole half of Mexico in the Mexican War. American foreign policy, even now, is not motivated by idealism, but by stealing other people's oil and their resources. And then, of course, we hear from Obama that our free market system, capitalism, uh, is based upon theft, taking away from people what he calls their fair share. So that's the leftist critique. And we stated so strongly in the film at one of our screenings, a woman, you know, got up and said, you know, I'm, I'm just shaking with anger. I'm tempted to walk out right now. But we said, no, listen, we, you know, we need to hear this stuff because this is the stuff that is being taught in our, in our education system. Yes. We can't get away from it. What we need to do is think about it and answer it. And so the film begins by, by letting the critics of America rant and rave about America. Uh, then I begin to examine these things one by one. I really show that the, what the left has done is leave a lot of history out because it's so inconvenient. It doesn't fit the narrative that they've been painstakingly trying to concoct. It's an inconvenient truth, Dinesh, <laughs> to, 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 to quote it's Al Gore. It's an inconvenient truth, yeah, and I suppose that's a good way to put it. So what we do in this film, in, you know, in 2016, my last film, we traveled in space to Hawaii, to Indonesia, to Kenya, mm -hmm. looking for kind of Obama's worldview. And I saw that. In this that film, too. we travel through time, and you see recreations of episodes of American history that help you to understand that many of these great issues we think about, you know, it occurred to Thomas Jefferson. It was debated by Abraham Lincoln. So by looking at our history, we begin to see that this country has wrestled in a very powerful way with these issues. And at the end of the day, far from being the problem, America is the solution. I uh, thoroughly enjoyed I saw you did a piece with, uh, with Megyn Kelly on Fox News, and you actually had her laughing. I think she was a little befuddled with an analogy that you used, sort of likening Obama in the U.S. to a serial killer slash child molester father, but well, it makes sense was, when you I, explain you know, it. <laughs> here's the point I was trying to make. I was simply trying to explain the ideology of Barack Obama. Look, there's an interesting moment in the film in which I'm talking to the radical activist Ward Churchill, uh, and I ask him this question. I say, if you had an atomic bomb, would you drop it on America? Kind of a startling question to ask, mm -hmm. but here's why I asked it. Because the left, including Churchill, even Obama, they've been, they always go around italicizing how bad America has been in the world. They talk about America almost, what Churchill does, as a kind of evil empire, mm -hmm. as almost America is like Nazi Germany. And so my point is, wait a minute, if I lived in Nazi Germany, and if I saw the bad influence that Nazi Germany is having on the world, and the harm it's doing to its own citizens, I would do what I could to undermine Nazi Germany, to bring down the regime. So the question I was asking Ward Churchill was, if you had an atomic bomb, and if America is this evil force in the world, would you drop the bomb and get rid of this evil force? And what's quite amazing is to watch the little tumblers of his brain as, his, as he processes this question and gives a surprising answer to it. So that's what I was getting at with Megyn Kelly. I was trying to say that from Obama's point of view, he sees America, if you will, as a destructive and harmful force in the world. So it's not that he hates America, it's that he sees America as a force for bad, and he's trying to contain and control that. There's a whole lot of things that you get into, not only in the book, but with the film. Um, a Florida state senator here, uh, maybe you want to elaborate on, on this one, Kimberly, uh, Alan Hayes. He did. He was so impressed by your movie that he said he wants to introduce a one-page bill later this year. And the bill actually states that students in 1,700 Florida public high schools and middle schools are to be shown this film unless their parents object. And I think that's an absolute must, because right now uh, you have the far left and a lot of their books are being put into the school system and it's mandatory reading. And if you're going to show far left viewpoints and things that aren't true about history, it should be mandatory that your book and or your movie is presented as well. Well, we know when I first heard about this, I flinched at the word mandatory, but then I realized, wait a minute, this is in college, in, in school, everything is mandatory. Correct. You know, it's not like you have options about what courses to take or what books to read. The school decides, you know, either they show Michael Moore's Fahrenheit 9-11 or Al Gore's An Inconvenient Truth, or they don't show it. If they show it, everybody watches it unless right. their parents write a letter. And so this Florida legislator is doing nothing other than what's happening in the schools anyway. And what he's trying to say is, look, if you're going to get one perspective, 
if you will, the, the shame narrative, as I call it, America the inexcusable. Isn't it nice to hear from an immigrant the other side of the story? That's absolutely uh, correct. And we're actually going to have Senator Alan Hayes on the show uh, at a future date. I was just speaking with him uh, the other day. Seems, seems like a great guy. But yeah, I mean, if Al Gore's inconvenient truth is going to be shown, yes. then you kind of need a little bit of balance there. Dinesh D'Souza is our guest right now, New York Times bestselling author of America, Imagine a World Without Her, as well as the film of the same name. Um, Dinesh, I wanted to ask you, actually, um, one of the excerpts from your book that uh, particularly gets liberals fired up is when you ask how Obama managed to get elected president as a complete unknown, and you say that there's a one-word answer. What is that? Well, the one-word answer is, is, is slavery, and, and America's you know, accumulated racial shame and guilt over the issue of slavery. Mm-hmm. So this is this is the reason that, uh, I mean, I'm not saying that Obama was elected, quote, because he was black, because I think what really made people turn to Obama was that he was a different kind of African-American leader, not like Jesse Jackson, not like Al Sharpton, not a racial uh, shakedown artist. Obama's a major shakedown artist, but not a racial shakedown artist. And so, um, you know, the irony of it all, of course, is that Obama's not descended himself from slaves, neither on his father's side nor his mother's side. His mother, of course, was white, but his father was a, uh, a foreign student from Africa, uh, not an African-American. And Obama hasn't really had the African-American experience. If you read his book, he talks far more about Kenya than he does about, about Selma or Martin Luther King. Uh, and so this is a man cut from a different cloth. Yeah, for for certain. Got a couple minutes left with you, Dinesh. Your thoughts on, say, the um, 2016 presidential race? Because, you know, Obama's going to be out of of office at that point. Obviously, he can't run for a third term. Uh, Where do you think the election's going? What does America need to get back on track? And what are you going to do when you don't have Obama to bash around anymore? (laughs) Well, there are two rival spirits in America today. Uh, One is the spirit of 1776. This is the entrepreneurial spirit that built America. The other can be called the spirit of 1968. This is the Obama spirit. It's the spirit of dependency, uh, of, of envy and resentment, of declaring war against the wealth creators, but preferring to sit inside the bandwagon rather than pulling the bandwagon. So uh, one of these two spirits is going to prevail. Look, this isn't just about Obama. In the, in the movie America, I focus on this progressive movement that's much bigger than Obama. Obama didn't actually even create the progressive movement. It created him. Hmm. So when Obama says he wants to remake America, he can't do it by himself, and he can't do it even in eight years, despite all the damage he's already done. Uh, I think he's going to try to pass the baton on to a leader uh, who is similar to him, possibly to Hillary Clinton, uh, to keep going in the same direction that he has uh, started. So I think that there's going to be a big choice before the American people about whether or not they want to strengthen the spirit of 1776 that built this country or the spirit of 1968 that is taking it down. And and by taking it down, you mean from the inside? Yeah, I mean that, you know, we've been living in this American era since mm-hmm. World War II, in which it's been a very special time to be an American. America's had this wonderfully positive influence in the world, despite our mistakes. Mm-hmm. The ordinary man in America has had an exceptional life that's not available to most people around the world. So we don't want that American dream to come to an end. Uh, it's it's already become more fragile under Obama. And I think what we need to, what we need to do is be more vigilant in protecting it. Well, I know we don't have a, a lot of time left. I actually wanted to ask your thoughts, Dinesh, on your uh, upcoming lit, uh, criminal litigation, but I'm sure you're probably tired of talking about that as well. But best of luck to you with that. Best of luck to you with the film. And uh, we certainly appreciate you joining us on American Medicine today. And uh, hopefully we'll have you back again uh, sometime real soon. Thank you. It's really enjoyed. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Have a good one. Great guy. He is amazing. So and I'm glad Costco finally is selling the book. Mm-hmm. Google finally got its act together, Didn't. not burying headlines for the search. Yep. Wanted to get into that, mm-hmm. too, but you know how it is when, yeah. you, when you're doing a radio show. Absolutely. You only have a certain amount of time. So. <laughs> we do. And you're listening to American Medicine Today on News Radio 970 WFLA. We'll hear more after the break.
Revolutionary in his field, Dr. Bonatti created, perfected, and patented the Bonatti Spine Procedures. Using his genius, Bonatti invented precise tools necessary to minimize surgery, scarring, anesthesia, and recovery. So successful are the Bonatti Spine Procedures, they consistently reflect over 94% patient satisfaction. 45,000 successful procedures have been performed exclusively at our location. Nearly half our patients suffer from failed back and neck surgeries at other facilities. Bonatti succeeds where others fail. This is the first time that I am pain free after 18 years and it's just wonderful. I love it. Phenomenal results. No pain whatsoever. My pain is virtually gone. Nothing short of a miracle. Those surgeries gave me my life back. Already I feel like a new person. I'm going home new. I can chase my grandbaby now. I can garden. I can cook and uh, I'm really thrilled. The outcome has been remarkable. I feel a hundred percent better. It's like a miracle. It was phenomenal. It literally did change my life. I was in a wheelchair at that time and uh, I left here walking. Every single pain that I had when I came here is gone. I'm ready to go home and feel great. This place is great. Thank you. Everything that they said they would do, they have done and I'm very, very satisfied and happy with those results. I knew in surgery, in fact I told the surgeon when he relieved the pain off the nerve. The pain is gone. I'm feeling wonderful. I have no pain. I feel better than I felt in four years from the surgery. It was almost immediate relief. Today I am totally pain free, which is just amazing. It's fantastic. It definitely works. I mean, I really don't know what else to tell you. <laughs> I'm happy. <laughs> Revolutionary in his field, Dr. Bonatti created, perfected, and patented the Bonatti Spine Procedures. Using his genius, Bonatti invented precise tools necessary to minimize surgery, scarring, anesthesia, and recovery. So successful are the Bonatti Spine Procedures, they consistently reflect over 94% patient satisfaction. 45,000 successful procedures have been performed exclusively at our location. Nearly half our patients suffer from failed back and neck surgeries at other facilities. Bonatti succeeds where others fail. You're listening to American Medicine Today, presented by the Bonatti Spine Institute, featuring the internationally acclaimed inventor of the Bonatti Spine Procedures, Alfred Bonatti, MD. Once again, here are Dr. Bonatti and your host, Kimberly Vermel. Thanks for continuing to listen to American Medicine Today, presented by the Bonatti Spine Institute. I'm Kimberly Vermel, here with world-renowned orthopedic surgeon, Dr. Alfred Bonatti, Ethan Euchre, and actually, we still have guest Dr. Dreschen in studio, and he'll be joining us in just a few moments to talk with Dr. Bonatti. But First, you heard the interview with Dinesh D'Souza about America. So what are some of your thoughts based on the movie? Well, I think uh, Dinesh D'Souza is a, is a hero. Um, I, I was not born in this country, mm -hmm. but I got the benefit of every dream that I had when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. So not only in my profession, in my private life, in my, in my aspirations, in the things that I want to accomplish, this country allowed me to do that. It's very sad to see that these opportunities are going to be denied mm -hmm. to the next generation. And they're gonna be denied thanks to Obama. Obama lost the opportunity of, of his life. The, it's, it's, it's amazing what type of opportunity he had. And instead of that, he entertained with dumb polemics and left side thoughts. Probably his damage on his youth and never recover. Mm -hmm. uh, the problem is America is unique. And America is and will be America because they are Americans here. Mm -hmm. The situation of the two parties is very distressful. Mm 
I was criticized one time when they said I hate politicians. I don't hate the person. Mm -hmm. I hate what they are doing to America. I hate that they are mediocre, irresponsible, and they are totally looking for their own benefit. They, I don't care if you're Republican or you are Democrat. Mm -hmm. You're American first. So you need to go and look for the health of the country and don't lie, don't promise lies, don't create expectations that you cannot accomplish. Mm -hmm. If you're going to do something, go, do it, leave, and go and live your life mm -hmm. again right. as, a, as, a, as a private individual. What you have is individuals that they become professional politicians. Mm -hmm. They are creating an issue. It's like three different people in the country, the ones that they are they, they, they want to maintain America as America was before. Mm -hmm. They want a group that is so disoriented, so self-service, so uneducated, too incredibly poor. They are the slaves of this country. They depend on the government. They depend on, the, on, on, on somebody giving them something. Mm -hmm. They try to look if they can sue somebody, if they can get somebody, or they can get some entitlement. So those are not Americans. The Americans are the ones that they go and they stand up by themselves and they don't want any help. They want to get better by their brains, the capacity to fight. Mm -hmm. That is the real American. And you have the other group. That is the group of politicians. That they are irresponsible, immoral, and totally corrupted. Mm -hmm. So I am going to really see what happened with these next elections to really believe what's going on in the country. Mm -hmm. But you know, I would like to always add that the political system needs to be drilled in. Mm -hmm. And to do that, we should not ever vote for anybody who's in the government, good, mediocre, or bad. Nobody in the government should stay more than eight years. Four years elected, and if you are good, stay another, another four years. But then go home and live with the laws that you pass to the country. Mm -hmm. And if you don't do that, you have no right to be in this country. Correct. Mm. What I, uh, I I know Dr. Bernardi has always been um, very vehement about um, term limits and things like that. Yes. So uh, we need to get an expert on here. I mentioned it before mm -hmm. off air that we need to get someone who, you know, a legal expert who can tell us what that process is. Um, Correct. Because I don't know what that process right. is. You they, know? they say you don't want a constitutional convention because that could be disastrous and erase pretty much the Constitution from the beginning, mm -hmm. but we'd be looking for a referendum. Oh, uh, okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, yeah, yeah referendum is the, the way to go. It's not expensive. It's real. Um, I, you are you are as foreign to me as, as I, uh, Christian. What do you think about the political system in this country today? Uh, unfortunately, way through uh, fractured, you know, fractionated, uh, theme that the, the country has lost its its original goals and uh, politicians exploit whatever crevice they can find in the system to 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 gain vote. I mean, uh, unfortunately, I don't see a unity of purpose any longer. I mean, that's the a little bit of the uh, disappointing aspect of politics in America these days. Absolutely, I agree with that. And uh, and the only way to correct that is to get these people back home. Mm -hmm. I mean, people who are in the government for 20 years. That's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, um, again, Dr. Dreshin, if uh, people want to, uh, of course, we, we 
uh, we cover a lot of array of topics mm-hmm. on American medicine today. Um, Dr. Bernardi loves to, to get into the politics of things. Mm-hmm. Um, he's very passionate about it. Um, but essentially, you know, we, uh, if, if people were listening to your segment earlier, Dr. Dreschen, he's a world renowned plastic surgeon at the clinic of plastic surgery in St. Pete. And uh, again, if people want to, uh, look into the, either the cool sculpting or the refresher facelift that you do, uh, what is your website? Cliniqueps.com. CliniquePS.com. And Clinique spelled like the cosmetics line. Correct. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Thank you very much for joining us, Dr. Dreshen. We truly appreciate it. Amazing results. Some of these people that have undergone the procedure actually look like they could be their own children. So amazing (laughs) amazing. things to go seek out online and with his facility. Um, Aside from that, we're excited. We go national on Fox Business News as of Sunday, August 17th, 5.30 to 6 p.m. You'll watch American Medicine today. So if you or if you know or you are specifically suffering from headaches, neck, back, or sciatic pain, tune in at that time. You're listening to News Radio 970 WFLA. You can also see us on ABC here locally, WFTS, from 7 to 7.30. We'll see you next week. Revolutionary in his field, Dr. Bonatti created, perfected, and patented the Bonatti Spine Procedures. Using his genius, Bonatti invented precise tools necessary to minimize surgery, scarring, anesthesia, and recovery. So successful are the Bonatti Spine Procedures, they consistently reflect over 94% patient satisfaction. 45,000 successful procedures have been performed exclusively at our location. Nearly half our patients suffer from failed back and neck surgeries at other facilities. Bonatti succeeds where others fail. This is the first time that I am pain free after 18 years. And it's just wonderful. I love it. Phenomenal results. No pain whatsoever. My pain is virtually gone. Nothing short of a miracle. Those surgeries gave me my life back. Already I feel like a new person. I'm going home new. I can chase my grandbaby now. I can garden. I can cook. And uh, I'm really thrilled. The outcome has been remarkable. I feel a hundred percent better. It's like a miracle. It was phenomenal. It literally did change my life. I was in a wheelchair at that time and uh, I left here walking. Every single pain that I had when I came here is gone. I'm ready to go home and feel great. This place is great. Thank you. Everything that they said they would do, they have done and I'm very, very satisfied and happy with those results. I knew in surgery, in fact I told the surgeon when he relieved the pain off the nerve. The pain is gone, I am feeling wonderful. I have no pain, I feel better than I felt in four years from the surgery, it was almost immediate relief. Today I am totally pain free, which is just amazing, it's fantastic. It definitely works, I mean I really don't know what else to tell you, (laughs) I'm happy. Revolutionary in his field, Dr. Bonatti created, perfected, and patented the Bonatti Spine Procedures. Using his genius, Bonatti invented precise tools necessary to minimize surgery, scarring, anesthesia, and recovery. So successful are the Bonatti Spine Procedures, they consistently reflect over 94% patient satisfaction. 45,000 successful procedures have been performed exclusively at our location. Nearly half our patients suffer from failed back and neck surgeries at other facilities. Bonatti succeeds where others fail.